Welcome to the series where I test out the OSR's wiki money making guides. I started this series almost a year ago and since then we've tried out multiple methods even if they're a little silly such as picking bananas or even flax. If you enjoy these types of videos then feel free to check out the playlist that I've made for them and feel free to leave a suggestion down in the comments for a method that you'd like to see tested. With that being said, let's get into the video. So for today's video we'll be taking a look at a rune crafting method. More specifically, we will be rune crafting double cosmic runes. Now, as for the requirements, 75 rune crafting is highly recommended because at 75 you unlock the giant pouch, which holds 12 extra essence. You can also do this at 59, which is when you get access to double cosmic runes, and then 27 to craft a single, but not really worth it money wise. It'll also be helpful to have some mining levels, agility, and thieving to navigate your way through the abyss. The higher your level, the higher chance you have of succeeding at some of the little shortcuts. Now there are three quests here listed that you will need for this moneymaker, and that is Enter the Abyss, Lost City, and the Hero's Quest. Aside from all that, you should be ready to go, but just keep in mind that this is runecrafting, so if you plan on doing this for long periods of time, you might lose a little bit of your sanity. Now as for the gear setup, it is very simple. You want to be as light as possible, or you at least want to be at zero kilograms. So I am bringing my full graceful outfit along with a black pickaxe, since it is the lightest pickaxe of them all. And I'm also bringing my Explorer's Ring 4 for some stamina boosts. And I have the Falador Shield 4, which isn't really necessary along with the ring, but the shield is just in case I get attacked by a PKer, I can use the Recharge Prayer so that I can protect my max cape. Of course, you'll also be needing some glories and some stamina potions. And here I am just emptying my bank of the placeholders for the rune pouches and inserting fillers so that the banking is just a lot easier and a lot smoother. So whenever I hit the inventory button or deposit inventory button, the runes that I craft will go in there, but the rune pouches will stay there, which is pretty nice. Also, this is the first time that I'll be using the menu entry swapper plugin in RuneLight for rune crafting. Instead of having to close the bank interface to fill up your pouches and withdraw more rune essence, you can just do it from within the bank interface by holding shift. Now the way I set this up was I went to menu entry swapper, item swaps, bank deposit shift click, and then I selected the eat slash wield slash etc option. And I gotta say this was actually a very helpful plugin. It definitely made me, I'd say, craft more runes over the course of the hour. I remember in the last rune crafting videos, uh, people were leaving comments saying that this was a thing and I finally decided to give it a shot here and yes, it works out fairly well. Another plugin I used was the item charges plugin and that was just to see how many charges I had left in my glory. Having it in a little info box on the left side of the inventory just helped me keep track of how many I had left. And again, that was the item charges plugin and I had the show info boxes option ticked. And the last plugin that I used was the essence pouch plugin and that one can be found in the plugin hub under rune light. And that just puts a number over the rune pouches to show you how much rune essence you have in there. But if you're clicking pretty fast, sometimes it doesn't register, but that's fine. I mean, for the most part, I didn't need to know how much was in there. I just wanted to make sure that there was actually rune essence in there. And Throughout this one hour, I found myself, after leaving the bank, I would click on all four just to make sure that they were filled up anyways, so yeah. Now going back to the menu entry swapper plugin, you can actually use that to equip the glories as well. I was able to shift click on the glory and equip it from there, although it did take me a little bit to learn because the first time I did it, I, I don't know what happened. I was holding shift and it said where and I clicked on it and whenever I made it to the altar to craft the runes, I didn't have the glory on me, so I did have to teleport to my house once throughout this one hour. But yeah, now with all these new plugins for runecrafting, I mean, I feel like this will greatly help you, especially over the course of getting 99, since there's so many hours that are needed to be sunk into the skill, so using these plugins will definitely help out in the long run. Now, in this video, I was using glories that had six charges, but I highly recommend that you use glories with four charges because once you're done using all of your glories, you can simply use the Dragonstone Recharge Scroll item from the GE, which is worth like somewhere between 300 and 400 coins, and that will recharge all of the jewelry in your inventory. So you can save a lot of money if you go with the fours instead of just buying the six versions and then selling the 
uncharged versions back or maybe just buy the sixes and recharge it with the dragonstone scroll anyways but yeah definitely take advantage of that since it will save you a lot of money now i know i have my max cape and i could have easily teleported to my house after every trip to restore my run energy but i figured that using stamina potions will ultimately net you more runecrafting xp and more runes of course and i just i I'm pretty sure the cost of the stamina potions are covered by how many extra you can do. If not, then oh well, that's on me. But either way, I wanted to go for the fastest route and see how many runes I could craft throughout this one hour. Now the max cape also acts as a rune crafting cape and this is very important because the rune crafting cape prevents the rune pouches from degrading, which also saves quite a bit of time. Now if you don't have a rune crafting cape, which I'm sure most people don't since this skill is kind of painful, um, you can use NPC contact to talk to the Dark Mage to repair it, or you can simply talk to him on one of your visits to the Abyss or whatever altar you decide to use. He's right there in the center doing what wizards do, so just talk to him and he will repair your pouches for free. Also, I did want to mention because I know somebody in the comments is going to say it, yes you can use an Eternal Glory for this moneymaker, but it is highly risky and I don't recommend it because whenever you go through the Abyss, your prayer gets drained to zero, so if you do get attacked, you won't be able to have Protect Item, and since you are Scald, you will lose everything, including that very expensive item. If you're still very insistent on bringing that item, then make sure you have like a Prayer Potion, or make sure you have Prayer Points, or bring that Falador Shield 4 so you can restore and use the Protect Item if you do get attacked. But again, I really wouldn't risk it. And one last thing, instead of using Pure Essence, you can also use the Day Alt Essence, I believe it's called, which nets you more Crafting XP but you do have to go and mine it yourself, which does take some time. But it's pretty AFK, so I mean, if you're just chilling, then you can do that. And then whenever it's time to runecraft, you can get a little bit more runecrafting XP and it'll make it a little less painful. But with that being said, we have completed our one hour of crafting double cosmic runes and the total amount that we were able to do is 6,048, which I gotta say is pretty impressive. Price value showed at 822000 but unfortunately, the actively traded price is lower, and I did do a margin myself to see what they were selling for, and it was around 123 to 124 and we did end up selling them for 123 since they wouldn't sell for anything else for quite some time. So yeah, we did lose quite a bit of money, but still, I'd say it's a pretty decent moneymaker. Now, of course, double nature runes are always going to be better, but it is a lot higher of a requirement. So if you do have the 75 level requirement for this, then you might want to give it a shot. So if we take into account the money spent on supplies, which was just the glory scroll to recharge all of the charges that we used, the stamina potions and the pure essence, we get 26,381 GP. Subtract that from the money we made, which was 743,904 GP we get a grand total profit of 717,523 GP from one hour of crafting Cosmic Runes. Double Cosmic Runes. And here is a comparison with the wiki. Of course, the wiki shows more money, but they are valuing the Cosmic Runes at their market price, not the actively traded price, so we did lose some money there, but we were able to craft more than what the wiki said you could craft, which was 5,400. Again, this is just an estimation. It's gonna depend on how efficient you wanna be but I do believe that the menu entry swapper did help me craft a lot more runes. Here's also a look at the XP we got. We got some mining and agility XP from the obstacles in the abyss, and then we got 24.2K rune crafting XP, so not bad. I just wanna say thanks for checking out the video, and if you enjoyed it, please consider giving it a like and maybe even a subscription. And as always, I will catch you guys in the next episode. Thank you.